check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. You now, let's talk about Bret Hart. <laughs> this guy's so excited. Well. He was asked about Vince. Talk about everybody cutting promos on Vince. I mean, these are two of the pros at cutting promos on Vince. There's nothing new here other than maybe some new catchphrases that we can now apply to their hatred of Vince. If you were in my shoes, Brett says, after everything that I did for them, for them to do what they did to me, and I always hear this crap, like I think Undertaker said it a few days ago, that they had to do what they were going to do because there were no other options or something. B.S. I had another six weeks left in my contract. There was a million things that could have been done. It was a case of liars and cheaters and backstabbers and guys that made that moment all happen. Sean, Triple H, Vince, and I, I wish I'd knocked them all out. I have no regrets. It was the single greatest thing I ever did. He was, by the way, under contract for six more weeks after Survivor Series. He was. Yeah. He was. Ken Shamrock, Jeff Jarrett, there were plenty of other people. I was never a hothead. I wasn't a guy who acted out and just punched everybody that I wanted to. I was a guy that if you were in my shoes that day, Vince was calling my bluff. He was going to confront me. He wanted me to back down and take the high road. And it was a gamble that he made. And then he thought he was going to try and get into a little altercation with me. He wanted it to be like a pull-apart. And everybody pulls us apart, and then he can act like he stood his ground against me. In those fleeting seconds of having to think about this, like, I can't believe Vince is going to confront me. I didn't charge him or anything. We actually walked up to each other, locked up like a wrestling match, and then I knocked him out with one punch, and it was the greatest punch I ever threw. It was an absolutely beautiful uppercut right between his arms. I lifted him about a foot off the ground, broke my hand, but it was the sweetest punch I ever threw. And I wouldn't change anything about it. And Vince McMahon can rot in hell. Wow. Hey, if you're going to keep asking him, he'll keep answering. Oh, he will. Oh, he will. Now, see, he doesn't like anybody. He doesn't like Triple H, anybody like that. Ronda Rousey, on the other hand, she does not like Vince. She does not like Bruce Pritchard. She does not like John Laurinaitis. But she does like Stephanie and Triple H. She says, I love pro wrestling, but my experience in my last run wasn't the best. Death throes of the Vince McMahon era. They just made it so needlessly stressful. I wish I could just show up at the venue, already know what the match is, have it memorized. I've heard it's a lot better now, but yeah, that was not my experience then. My experience then was if you showed up on Saturday Night Live and no one had written the show yet, like you hadn't been filming it and practicing it all week, you just showed up and you had to negotiate what the script was going to be until the very last second. Even if we killed it, had such a great time while we were out there, it was just the needless anxiety of getting to the finish line made it not fun. So unfortunately, kind of put a gross kind of a film on the incredible experience. I hear from everybody. So much better now. I'm happy for them. But it's also, I got babies. I can't be taking them on the road. I did it with one for a little bit. Can't do that with two. It was hard on my husband for us not to be there all the time. Just don't think I can ask him to sacrifice that anymore. As far as her last match with Shayna, she says, If we would have done that match at Bloodsport, people would have loved it. But the crowd, it wasn't for them at all. It was all MMA Easter eggs. All these moments in MMA history that we're big geeks for. We're recreating, throwing homage to in the match. And it was not inviting any audience participation or anything like that. But, I don't know if you read my book, it was a nice little F you on the way out. We're going to sit there, you're going to sit there and watch this match that we wanted to do from the beginning. I don't care what you think, go get some popcorn, but we loved it. We had a great time. And from the very beginning, I always wanted to be able to wrestle with Shayna, put her over and leave. Which they never would have let us do unless I threatened to leave right at the new year when they told me I wouldn't be able to fight Becky at WrestleMania, which was what I came back to do. I was like, fine, I'm going to tag with Shayna. She's going to turn on me. Then I'm going to leave, or I'm going to leave right now. That was the only reason we were able to do it, because they wouldn't let us do any Four Horsemen stuff. She said, uh, regarding why they didn't do a match with her and Becky at Mania. Say it. Because Vince is an 80-year-old a-hole. No, Vince, John, Bruce, they could all suck something, which I cannot say here on the air. <laughs> but she does like uh, she does like Stephanie and, Stephanie and uh, Triple H. Triple. They talk about the kids. Yeah. When asked if she was done with wrestling, she said, full time, yeah. I might have to come back and have some fun here and there, but I can't be leaving home and being on the road like that. Bloodsport, that's right up her alley. Regarding the finish of the main event of Mania 35, 
I don't think my shoulders are flat on the ground, so I was trying to scoot to get my shoulders flat because it's so loud I can't hear anything. But that's the difference between a match that got thrown together the night before and the debut match, which is a match that had been put together for weeks with tons of support and practice, opinions, everything like that. Why did we put a whole year into promoting and building this match, and then it's just thrown together at the last second? We were still figuring it out when we were at the venue, and that's what a lack of practice and rehearsal does. Lack of practice and rehearsal. I was going to say, you know, everything that you said there about her quote, I'm sure there are a couple of old wrestlers who are listening right now that never got past you saying, what if you just showed up to Saturday Night Live and you didn't have a show written for you and you didn't practice it all week and those guys are just listening right now going, well, you just you called it in the ring. That's what you did. Well, yeah, you know what? She can't call it in the ring. No. So no. you got to do what you got to do. You're going gonna to take a guy like Bad Bunny and tell that guy to go out there and call it in the ring? No. Bad Bunny goes out there, he practices that thing for six weeks, you know, Logan, I think, is is doing more calling it in the ring. But, I mean, he his first matches, more, yeah. same deal. I mean, if, if a person can't work, but they're a great athlete, then you gotta you got to do this. But they didn't do it because, as I mentioned a thousand times, it was a complete and total disaster. Everybody hated it. Every show was like this. You didn't know what you were going to do when you got to the building. Or worse, think about this. Okay, it's Monday. Actually, I'll just I'll, I'll make it easy for everybody. I'll give you a good example. All right, this is how it is now. Okay, this is how it is now. All right. Next week it's Uncle Howdy versus Chad Gable, Bronson Reed versus Braun Strowman, and the tournament to crown the Intercontinental Title number one contender begins. You know what's gonna happen next week on Raw? What's that? Uncle Howdy and Chad Gable, Bronson Reed and Braun Strowman, and a tournament to crown the Intercontinental Title number one contender is gonna begin. Okay. Name the last time they announced a lineup in advance and they didn't do one of the matches. You can't, okay? Back then, it was like every week, every week they would announce a card for the following week, and it was absolutely 100% the exact opposite. Well, what did they advertise that they actually did? Oh, nothing? Oh, every single solitary thing they advertised they didn't do? Every single week. So it's one thing for fans, but let's imagine you're Bronson and Braun Strowman. Yeah. Thinking about this match all week. You're all ready to go. Got these ideas. They've given you the finish. You know where it's going. And then you show up at the building on Monday, and they're like, eh, we ain't doing this. Bronson, you're facing Sami Zayn. It's like, what? What? Or even worse, even worse, it's going to be Braun against Odyssey Jones because you know what? All of a sudden, I don't like his aesthetic. I don't like what he looks like. I don't like something about him that's very small. So I'm going to now not do anything with him, and now it's going to be Braun and Odyssey. That is what they would have done. But now they advertise matches, and they actually do them every week. So that is the lineup for Raw next Monday, though. And tonight on NXT, we have got Wesley, Pete Dunne, and Joe Hendry, number one contenders match for the NXT title. We got the NXT gauntlet match for the women jada parker carmen petrovich ren sinclair kendall gray sol ruka and adriana rizzo love it winner gets a shot at uh roxanne luke gallows carl anderson versus hank and tank lola vice versus wendy chu ashanti adonis versus dion that's the guy with the book yes dion lennox yes the heck was i supposed to know that and chase you Speaking of happy days, they're going to have a title celebration. And I can't wait to watch. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.